And not because they didn't believe it, but because it wasn't cool. But you know, instead of cool, maybe I should say it wasn't hot. Well, when I was a teenager in 1843, <laughs> uh, I would say it wasn't hip, but hip is not cool anymore. And cool is like lukewarm. It, hot is, it wasn't hot. There, that's good. I don't think it's right, but I'm saying it anyway. They, we broke the culture of silence, and it became okay for people to inform on their classmates. Okay? And finally, there, there have been laws that have been passed, including one in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, anti-bullying law, so we're focusing on bullying. We used to see it as part of the natural order of things. Now we're willing to confront it and to try to reduce it and to get teachers involved in intervening. These are terrific things and we have reduced the number of school massacres. Uh, some, somebody intervened and informed a principal uh, in, at New Bedford High School in 2001, averting a tragedy. The same thing happened in Marshfield in 2004. The students are coming forward, they're getting involved, they wouldn't do it before, they're doing it now, and that's made a big difference. Well, you've heard of the baby boomers. Who could not have heard of the baby boomers? I, they have determined so much about our society, and if you look at where they come from, they've been doing this uh, over a long period of time, because look at, take a look at the 60s, okay? Look at how low the homicide rate was, okay? And then, look, in the middle 60s, what happened to the murder rate? It escalated. Notice that? It went up, up, up until about 1980. Well, that's the baby boomers. 76 million baby boomers. So the baby boomers um, were teenagers then. Everybody wanted to be young. The Oil of Olay ad said, can you tell she's over 25? There was a popular television program, Logan's Run, where people were, were executed when they reached 30. And then there was that novel and movie, Soylent Green, where they made fortune cookies out of older people. Uh, everybody wanted to be a teenager. All the models were teenagers. <laughs> All, everybody wanted to be twiggy and, and, and look like a young person. 85-year-old uh, women were wearing mini skirts because the, te the baby boomers were wearing mini skirts. That's just the way it was, or bell bottoms. And then guess what happened? The, the, oh, not only that, but there were revolutionary ideas during that time. There were a lot of young people who had dropped out, drugged out, uh, lived on communes, were very political, and, and often very radical. So. Uh, those things happened in the 60s until about 1980, and then guess what happened? The murder rate declined because the baby boomers matured. They were no longer teenagers. They mellowed out. They no longer uh, committed violent street crimes. Instead, they committed white-collar offenses like embezzlement and fraud. Well, those are less risky. Those are more mature crimes, you see. Uh, and then Look again here, and you'll see that the murder rate started to decline, then all of a sudden, unexpectedly, the murder rate went up again. Oh my gosh, in the middle 80s, and I'll tell you why. I'm glad you asked me. The answer is the war on drugs. Yes, we fought the war on drugs, and we incarcerated large numbers of adult drug dealers in the crack cocaine era. But guess what? Their younger brothers filled the vacuum. Now, instead of having a 24-year-old crack dealer, you had a 14-year-old crack dealer. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something. A 14-year-old can't shoot straight. You know, he's going to have to, if he's going to defend his market, his territory, his turf, he needs a little gun to protect his, his interests. Uh, the problem is we had a lot of innocent bystanders who were killed during that period of time, right here in Boston, just a few blocks from here, uh, because of the war on drugs. The war on drugs created a war on the streets, and it was waged by teenage drug dealers. And that happened for, for a few years until the mid-1990s, 
and take a look. Look at 1994. This is shocking. Look what happened to the murder rate. It plummeted. We finally started doing the right things to reduce the murder rate. And by the way, I know in Boston, the murder rate is up a little bit this year. I'll show you that. But in general, the murder rate has been declining for many years now. Uh, I'll show you in a few minutes. But look, it was all young people. See that normal curve? Every, you'll see it over and over again. The normal curve, 18 to 24-year-old, up, then down. Uh, 14 to 17 in blue, up, then down. It means there was a spike in the murder rate committed by young people, and then it plummeted, okay? And it, that happened over a period of about a decade. Uh, here's the normal curve again. The entire increase in the murder rate in the United States was murder by guns. There was, look, look, at, look at the others, they're flat. They're constant, nothing happened with them. No, there wasn't any increase or decrease with knives or blunt objects or hands or strangulation, nothing. The whole increase decrease was with handguns, not rifles, not at all. And it all happened, almost all happened in big cities. See, again, suburban, small cities, rural areas, flat. Nothing much changed. Almost all of it, bless you, happened in major cities in the United States. It happened in every region of the country. And in Boston uh, and New York, we became models for how to reduce youth violence. And there were two, two models. The New York City model was called Zero Tolerance Policing, where the police would, 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 would arrest youngsters for doing minor things before they did the big things. You don't wait for them to kill someone or, or assault them. Instead, you, you, you say, hey, no more graffiti on the wall and turn down that music. It's disturbing the neighbors. You're under arrest, okay? And, and, and it was that zero tolerance policy that is said to have reduced the, the crime rate in New York City. In Boston, we had the partnership model. It was softer, gentler. We had the police, community policing, cooperating in partnerships, collaborating with the residents, with clergy and with, with teachers and parents and, and business leaders, all coming together uh, around this problem, okay? Uh, look at what happened. See the red line? That's New York City. New York City went from a really dangerous place to a pretty safe city. The only problem is that the reports of civ civilian reports of uh, police brutality, excessive force, skyrocketed at the same time. Well, whenever you make the police more aggressive and confrontational, that's what's going to happen. That did not happen in Boston. In Boston, the partnership model worked, and we also had a reduction in the crime rate. Yes, in Boston, there was law and order, lock up the youngsters who can't be saved, uh, uh, clergy, for example, would take their congregations to the streets and the gangs and they would inform to the police on those incorrigible youngsters who were responsible for so much of the violence. But they also made sure that they supervised youngsters in the afternoon who could be turned around. So there was prevention pro as well as law and order. Those were the two prongs of this attack on juvenile crime. Law and order, lock them up if you can't save them, but also prevent future violence by supervising teenagers who would otherwise, did you know for 25 years we asked our teenagers to raise themselves? And they didn't do a very good job. So this was a grassroots effort. The 10 Point Coalition, these were Baptist ministers, uh, uh, and uh, they, they, as I said, they took their congregations to the streets and the gangs. They cooperated with the police. We had more after-school programs, more summer jobs, 11,000 summer jobs in Boston every year. Just to put it in perspective, Baltimore, which is about the same size as Boston, could only generate 3,000 because they have so much more poverty. How do you expect businesses to, 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 to generate summer jobs for teenagers when they're on the verge of bankruptcy. It's just not gonna happen. 
But in Boston, it did, and it made a big difference. And we had college students all over the city and parents and, and others volunteering to tutor in the schools. And take a look at the result. Look at 1990, we had 152 murders. That's shocking. And then by, 1990, by 1999, there were only 31. Okay, I gotta work fast now. And, but if you look, last year there were 72, but that's not even half of what we had in 1990. I mean, the murder rate in this city is so much lower than it used to be. It's, it's, we're, there's no epidemic, if anybody tells you that, uh, they are wrong. It, we have a, a much, uh, our, our rate of violent crime in the city is far lower now than it was in the early 1990s. There's no question. And by the way, in 1990, 39 murders were committed by teenagers, 14 to 17 years of age. By 1998, there were three. Three! We went from 38 to three because of the programs that I just told you about. The gangs are still around, they still have guns, and their involvement in violent crime has not declined. In fact, it's increased over the years. And certainly gangs have changed. Uh, I'm sure you already know this, there are a lot more gangs. Uh, they don't just fist fight anymore. They are more likely to commit assault and murder. Uh, their murders, their members are older. Many of them were released from prison uh, after spending time and being incarcerated in the war on drugs. There are more immigrant gangs than there used to be, of course, like MS-13 from El Salvador. Uh, and they fill the vacuum that's left by the withdrawal of adults from the lives of our teenagers. That is what it's all about. We have withdrawn our support for teenagers and the vacuum that was left by this withdrawal of supervision uh, is being filled by gangs. So if you look at this, it's shocking, really. This is the percent of families with children under 18 lacking full-time parental supervision. Look how it has increased dramatically since 1970. Uh, two career families, single mother families, single father families, uh, 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 d divorce rate, which is very high. All of those things have contributed to the lack of adult supervision. And so, when do teenagers commit their crimes now? It's not in the middle of the night. That's adults. Want to put on a curfew? They've done that in a lot of cities like D.C. They're fine if you're over 18. I say, let's put on a curfew, and we won't let anybody over 18 out on the streets after 11 p.m. Because for people over 18, that's when they commit their crimes, in the middle of the night or after 11 p.m. But teenagers commit most of their crimes after the school bell rings and before mommy and daddy get home from work. So between three and about seven, the crime rate for teenagers peaks. By the way, did you know that the pregnancy rate also peaks during that period of time? Well, for the same reason. Nobody's around. The kids can do anything they want. You know, when I was a teenager, bless you, people would have sex, at, at, uh, they'd go to Lover's Lane. You probably never even heard of Lover's Lane. But, you know, drive your car and people would get in the back seat of the car and have sex. That's uncomfortable. <laughs> well, nowadays, why bother? Why, why bother when you just come home to an empty house, grab milk and cookies from the refrigerator, and hop in mommy and daddy's bed. What's the big deal? And that's what's happening. And that's why the pregnancy rate soared for that period of time. And that's also why the crime rate soared as well. Uh, we've got more after school programs. Those are great. We need those after school programs. But they have eligibility requirements, okay? For most after-school programs, you need a certain good grade point average, good conduct record, you have to pay a fee, and even if none of those apply, you have to find your own transportation home. Hey, the very people who need these after-school programs the most aren't eligible 